James Gandolfini. Private, reserved, and painfully shy, James Gandolfini granted one of his only in-depth interviews to Inside the Actors Studio in 2004. Where were you born? Westwood, New Jersey. What are your parents' names? Santa and uh, James. And where were they born? My father was born in Italy, in a place called Borgataro, and then when he was two or three, he came here. My mother was born in, in, in America and moved back to Italy when she was six months old, and then came back when she was about 20. Perhaps because of his own ties to the actor's studio, having studied there himself, Gandolfini opened up in the interview, the revealing a rare look at his early doing. years. Were you a well-behaved kid? Up to a point. What point? High school. <laughs> Gandolfini capped his teen angst years, earning a bachelor's degree in communications from Rutgers in 1983. Then he went to New York City to manage a bar. The club was uh, straight two nights a week, gay two nights a week, and kind of everything else two nights a week. <laughs> so I spent a few years just watching people, just in amazement, and uh, saw a lot of interesting things that I stored up for later. Encouraged by a college friend and nightclub regular, Gandolfini attended his first acting class. It was a Meisner technique class. I went in and I was scared to death. I was shaking. Terrified, but fascinated and determined, Gandolfini would spend the better part of the next decade mastering his craft until finally catching a break in 1992 on Broadway. I auditioned for the role of uh, Steve in um, Streetcar Named Desire with Jessica Lange and Alec Baldwin. A few more theater roles would follow before director Sidney Lumet gave the 30-year-old actor his first major movie role in A Stranger Among Us. Following several smaller roles in Mr. Wonderful, Money for Nothing, and opposite Brad Pitt exactly. in Quentin Tarantino's True Romance. Yeah, well, maybe you can help me. I'm looking for a friend sure. of mine. Gandolfini's career really gained momentum in the mid-90s, playing Gina Davis's boyfriend in Angie. We're getting married and you can't go out with me no more? One of the heavies in Terminal Velocity. Oh, that's very good. That's very funny. And a series of big budget features like Crimson Tide, The Juror, Night Falls on Manhattan, She's So Lovely, Fallen, and several co-starring John Travolta, including A Civil Action and Get Shorty. I think you ought to turn around and go back to Miami. But it wasn't the big screen where the Italian-American Jersey family man would find the role he was born to play. In his late 30s, Gandolfini landed the role that would make him a star, New Jersey mob boss Tony Soprano. You all right? <laughs> My leg is broken, the oh, bounce coming through. Let me see. Let me see. Ah! You prick. Where's my fucking money? He never expected to get the part, as he told Inside the Actor's Studio. I got the script, and I remember reading it, and I was laughing out loud. And um, I said, there's no way I'll, I will be able to do this. I really thought that they would pick someone, you know, different than I. How different? In what way? You know, a uh, suave, good-looking mafioso guy. You know, just somebody a little more leading man type, basically. He may not have considered himself leading man material, but from the first episode of The Sopranos, he was an undeniably compelling screen presence. His Tony Soprano was part family man. Yes. Vulnerable at times, at least in his sessions with his therapist, Dr. Melfi. You always talk about him more like a son. Some ways he was. A man of strong appetites, sexual and otherwise. You got time for lunch? You are my lunch. And an unapologetic mobster with an explosive temper. Tony, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just having some bad luck. Yeah. Just got worse. Ah! Oh. 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 Mr. Spock. <laughs> Shortly after the show debuted in 1999, series creator David Chase spoke to CNN about his leading man. We have a great cast, and uh, of that cast, James Gandolfini is really important to the equation. I think, you know, he's playing a mob boss, a killer, and a tough guy, and I think yeah. if, uh, if you didn't have someone playing that role who also could elicit feelings of empathy and sympathy and even pity, um, I think we'd be in, we wouldn't have the show we have. Some of Gandolfini's finest acting came in scenes with Edie Falco, who played his wife, Carmela. Their marriage featured regular betrayals and titanic fights. What the f that? Allow me! What? 
and moments of surprising tenderness. To my husband, you're not just a funny, smart, lovable, good-looking guy. You're mine. Thank you, baby. Oh, happy birthday. Falco spoke of her co-star in glowing terms. I work most often with Jim Gandolfini, um, who was so easy to be married to and to feel like was family with me. It was just so easy to feel uh, we had this long history together and uh, love acting with him. It's like acting with him is like when you're a kid and you're playing, you know, house or something. You know, it's. Uh, it felt very ungrown up. It felt very unactory. We were just pretending, you know, and it just felt as real as anything has. So it was an absolute joy.